amazing. Hey, he say club or something else. Yeah, the club's awesome, but I said, don't you have some work to do here in Vegas? Well, sure, but I can't pretend I'm half my age on the trade show floor. Do you live, eat, and sleep the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey, everybody, and welcome to No Vacancy with Glenn Hausman. I, of course, am the Glenn Hausman hosting the show. Because it would really be strange to have a show called No Vacancy with Glenn Hausman, hosted by, uh, I don't know, John Snyder, maybe, of uh, great fame from one of my favorite TV shows of the 1970s, Dukes of Hazzard, um, with uh, Bruce Ford, SVP of Lodging Econometrics, and today we're going to talk about the Dukes of Hazzard. How are you, Bruce? Glenn, it's <laughs> wonderful to be with you today, and the Dukes of Hazzard <laughs> was one of my favorite shows on Friday night. Um, we used to watch Dukes, and then it was The Incredible Hulk, and yeah. then I had to go to bed. <laughs> Excellent time back in the 80s. Uh, it, re- it really was, and, uh, you know, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry, and, uh, you know, whew, what a great what a great show those two were. I can't believe Just the good old boys, never <laughs> mean and no harm. Who's your favorite character? <laughs> I like that. Rascal. Beach all you never saw been in trouble with the boss. <laughs> they, they was born. <laughs> oh my god! I bet we could sing that whole song too. But I like that. Roscoe I'm... Pico Train. Oh, you, 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 flash. <laughs> 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 right. And uh, sorry to, that we've completely lost our millennial audience right there. And <laughs> I want to say uh, thanks again for listening. <laughs> Follow me at Traveling Glenn on Twitter, and of course you get notified when new shows are posted. We've got a lot of great bonus content that's been coming out, and I don't want you to miss any. Anything. And listen, stop what you're doing right now. Pass this link to the show along to two of your friends or co-workers. And let's spread the love about what's going on here. And don't forget to follow me at hotelmanagement.net. And follow my good stuff at Bridge Street Global Hospitality for Here to Stay TV. And Bruce Ford, uh, you know, Lodging Econometrics, you guys are up to a lot of things. But before we talk about what your insight is, I want to say uh, we were at HD Expo last week, and uh, quite frankly, to everyone listening out there, I'm going to make a little admission here. Bruce and I recorded uh, what is possibly the most interesting show of all time, and you will never, ever get to uh, hear it. We were not too satisfied with that, were we, Bruce? No, we weren't. (laughs) Unfortunately, a few factual inaccuracies um, caused us to have to hit the delete button. So, uh, unfortunately for you, uh, our on-the-show floor... Uh, insights were uh, uh, were sent into the vertical file, shall we say? Yeah, no, but uh, we can recall all of them and we can rehash them for you today. Well, I would like very much to uh, put on the record that uh, I'm very disappointed by it because we are living in a post factual world anyway, and it would be nice to just be able to get out there and uh, spread lies, lies, and filthy lies to our listening audience. But no. We are sworn here to uh, tell you the truth, even through our opinions. Everything we say is 100% accurate and uh, right, I guess, unless you put it through uh, a certain prism. Then everything we say is wrong. But it is right. You mean you care about your reputation, Glenn? (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. Come on now. I'm going to try hard not to uh, throw it away. But, you know, you never know. Maybe I'll get tossed out like tomorrow's trash. But, uh, you know... That's one of the risks we take here when we do a hard-hitting show like the No Vacancy Podcast, because, you know, we dig right into those uh, big issues. I do want, before we get into the HD conversation, thank the good folks over at uh, Porcelanosa. I had a great time doing an event on the Thursday night of the HD show down at a place called uh, Bunnyfish Studio, where we brought together all of the... uh, you know, a whole bunch of top industry designers for an amazing discussion. If you go check out porcelanosa.com soon enough, we're going to have great video coverage of that, all broken down into great different segments. And uh, you'll really, really love to hear what these say. These people said. We had great folks, not only from Studio Bunnyfish, who are the mastermind designers behind uh, Tony Shea. You've heard of Tony Shea, the Zappos guy, his amazing downtown Las Vegas revitalization project. We had uh, top designers from Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton. We even had uh, Gary Stephens, who runs uh, the Canopy brand for Hilton, and the West Elm Hotels people, and Salt Hotels people. So, 
unbelievable event. I want to thank Andy, P Andy Pennington for putting that together. And while we're speaking about them, I would like to say that um, Porcelanosa is great because they partner with the leading hotel brands and bring European trend forward style to economy mid-scale right through luxury resort properties. Make sure you check out Porcelanosa.com. That's P-O-R-C-E-L-A-N-O-S-A.com to see the world-renowned designer projects that they work with, like uh, Zaha Hadid, Foster & Partners, Sir Richard Rogers, Louis Vidal, oh my god, and of course the good folks at Bunny Fish and all the other companies that were there. You know, I really see that they are a manufacturer who really gets the importance of design and the relationship with creative architectural community space. It's a great uh, partnership that I see. They don't just do it for you, they work with you. Bruce, how is that for a little plug? Are you alright with that? Important stuff, Glenn. I mean, the <laughs> collaboration today leads to uh, better products at the end of the day. You know, the longer we're in the hotel industry, the more multi-generational we get. And, of course, everybody has a little bit of a different twist on how things ought to be done and how they ought to look. And so that's important stuff. Yeah, and let's, uh, let me show you my brilliant transition now. And you're uh, absolutely right. Speaking of the art of working together, HD show floor, there was a lot of that that I saw. People are changing with the times. You know, there are a lot of younger folks that have been entering the workforce uh, and a lot of younger hotel guests as well. And I don't want to say that millennials are uh, steering the design direction of the business because I think that's total BS. Remember, I told you guys I'm going to tell you the truth. I think that uh, general societal changes are taking place and it's being reflected most through the prism of millennials, but that is a total lie. Everybody's changing. We all want the same things. Let's not uh, let's not confuse things a little bit. So, Bruce, I want to know what was your number one takeaway from HD Expo in Las Vegas this year? Number one takeaway was the show floor scope was different and the type of exhibitor was different. I think we saw a lot more uh, resort-style products coming back into the show this year that was maybe different from past years. I think there was also some technology products. You know, I happened to have a booth next to me that was selling a significant amount of, uh, of light bulbs, and they were very, very, very busy because they had the newest technology and people were very interested in it. And, uh, of course, energy savings, but also time savings are the two spectrums that people are looking through in good design these days. And so I think we saw a lot more of the resort-style product coming back into the show floor for the first time in a couple of years at least. Yeah, um, I, I think so too. And a lot more um, to complement that resort-style product, a lot more outdoor-type stuff, it seemed, as well. I think the designs there seem to be really very uh, uh, forward these days, and uh, with so much more emphasis on outdoor space, especially within the resort environment, I think that's, uh, that's critical. You know, when we used to have pool-style um, uh, outdoor furniture, Glenn, it was about how many chairs we could get out there. Now it's about creating more VIP private spaces and doing that well, um, and not having 700 chairs, but having 100 spectacular suites that people want to pay for. Right. Yeah, it seems to be like a smaller, more exclusive is really in at the top end of the market, yes? I agree. Well, the pools aren't as big as they used to be either, and we're not talking about, you know, pools the size of the Mandalay Resort Pool. We're talking about pools that are more lap pool, but yet have sun in certain times of the day where people are looking for a little bit more of a higher end experience they're paying 250 plus dollars a night to stay at the property so you get a lot of those converging factors that um says okay to the you know more higher end furniture so we certainly saw a lot of that come back i think also the flooring trends continue to change um you know we're looking at lvt kind of tile we're looking at carpet tile lots of different alternatives out there today for the guest rooms uh, yeah, anything that in particular you see um, taking taking off? I really like the uh, the LVT type of stuff. I think it looks really um, really upscale, and it's really not as expensive as you would think. Now, do you have uh, wood floors in your own home, Glenn? Yes, we do have wood floors in our own own home, without with the exception of one room which we are hoping to uh, convert soon to wood floors. So uh, if you'd like to add to the advertising budget here at the uh, No Vacancy Podcast, please reach out to me at Traveling Glenn, Glenn at Rouse, <laughs> R-U-S-E dot media, and uh, put in your subject line, we want you to get a new floor. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know, I 
I've got two perspectives on the uh, on the LVT kind of flooring, Glenn. I think mm-hmm. one thing that it brings to a hotel is is that it brings a certain clean look that has a little bit more durability. And a lot of places where it's going today is into those breakfast spaces or the more of the public spaces uh, within the select service hotels. So you go into a Homewood Suites and you walk into the lobby. You're in a very, very high traffic area, high use area, chairs moving left, right, back, forth, people walking around. It just wears better than carpet does in that situation. Okay. However, the next move for it is into the guest room mm-hmm. and kind of fitting things together in the guest room where you have, um, you know, some space in the guest room that is high, high wear, high traffic, whether that be between the beds, right. whether that be around the desk, um, you know, in the front walkway, if you will, in there. Um, <clears throat> there's certainly some different formulas that are being put together there in terms of how that should look. Um, In many cases, inside the guest room, uh, there's a noise concern, okay, in terms of people walking around with heavy feet. We do have people that have heavy feet in this world. Right. Um, And how that may change the noise factor in the guest room. But also a, a concern is, you know, inside of a hotel, just like inside of your own house, floors settle, okay, and there's not always an extremely flat surface, okay, there can be bumps, and if you don't have a pristinely flat surface, sometimes LVT is not the best application, right? particularly in a renovation. Hmm. So there's some, there's some challenges there. Um, you know, carpet does cover up a lot of uh, inconsistencies in the surfacing, and uh, when you're dealing with an older hotel, you can have some problems with that. So... Um, I think that in new construction, I think you can build it so that it can work, but I'm not sure it works in all cases in a conversion or a major renovation of an aged property. Right. That's a really uh, astute observation, Bruce, and this is this is why I have you on the show all the time, because you're always giving us the, uh, well, that's, the scoop. That's what you keep trying to tell me, Glenn, but I think you have me here because I've got some good stats. Yeah. So you want to talk 1QLE? Well, I do, Let's but I, well, I was going to say uh, it's really not the stats. It's your uh, it's your sexy good looks, Bruce, and I just love the uh, dulcet tones <laughs> of your voice every uh, every month or so when we get to talk on here. But before we do, I do want to, uh, I do want to say that back at HD, I... Um, Got to sit in on a great conversation that included the uh, the inimitable uh, Steve Wynn and his uh, design partner for over 37 years, Roger Thomas. That was an absolutely uh, interesting uh, event where he told lots of great stories about the creation of um, the company and his early days. And it was uh, pretty, pretty fabulous stuff, Bruce. Steve Wynn has probably got one of the greatest Las Vegas calling cards for making truly destination resorts that combine retail, that combine food and beverage, that combine gaming, that combine convention, that combine just a reason to feel luxurious when you enter his resorts. And he certainly gained that at the win. And, you know, um, the new property he's going to do in the off the Boston? back of the win has been oh, the back. Long, yeah, that one. Long, mm-hmm. long talked about, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's finally revealed some more concrete plans and it appears they're going to begin construction but it's a water park within a luxury resort Glenn and I can't recall anywhere else in the world that that's happening well he seems to do but, things first and then everybody seems to uh, pile on sure we certainly have water park resorts and we have water park resorts where uh, families want to go mm-hmm. but this is going to be a water park resort that is designed for um, people of really kind of all ages, but more adults. It's like going to be like an adult-style theme park, if you will, built around a large lagoon. So I'm quite interested to see how it works out. And, of course, Steve, uh, Mr. Wynn, has changed his tune many, many years now doing developments in Las Vegas. He says it's not so much about the casino revenue anymore, and he looks to create other things around it. Well, it's certainly not. I mean, we're, we're talking only about uh, 40% of revenue coming from the gaming floor. And, you know, 
drop and hold for the casinos is uh, really uh, dropping, 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 to use the same exact word. Um, but it's a, it's a serious problem, and younger folks simply aren't interested in gambling in the same way that their older uh, older brethren are. I mean, you, you know, uh, you see uh, women over 50 seem to be the main predominant slot player for example, and um, young women and young men don't care about that at all, and even table games, not so much. It's like, hey, let's stop by and play a couple of hands of blackjack, but it's not like let's camp out for the evening and, and, and play and gamble. They'd rather just go and eat and go to the club. Yeah, and I think the the casinos have recognized this as this not a new trend, but I think in the long and short of it, um, they want to offer more alternatives because uh, more people are want to come to Las Vegas because it is typically considered the entertainment capital of North America. It has the greatest resorts, mm-hmm. but at the same time, there's also there's that gambling, but there's tremendous uh, luxury retail, there's tremendous luxury spas, mm-hmm. there's tremendous luxury dining, and that whole experience continues to elevate Las Vegas as a true destination where they have not suffered the same declines as Atlantic City has because Atlantic City can't say I'm as much of a destination with that feel as Las Vegas is. Yes, unfortunately, uh, Atlantic City had plenty of time to make themselves a true destination um, convention center and resort. They just never were able to pull that off. Um, hopefully, with some of the excitement that's happening there now, um, it'll come together. For example, the former Taj Mahal property becoming a hard rock. I'm excited about that. I know it'll be two years away, but um, big news this week is they got it, um, the property for what, four cents on the dollar? <laughs> mm. They got it pretty inexpensively, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that is. And, uh, yeah, go on. And some of that is who's willing to make the bet. I mean, obviously, there's some uh, negative sentiment attached with Atlantic City, but I, you know, having not looked at the numbers, Glenn, and I know you've gone more frequently than yeah. I have, but um, the Borgata seems to have a formula that may yeah, work. It does. Uh, the Borgata, for those of you who don't, yeah, I was going to say the for those of you who don't know, formula does work. Mm-hmm. If it does work, then maybe that's what Hard Rock is looking to do, but with something a little bit more spicy in the hard rock kind of way yeah i think um hard rock has a really pretty solid brand you know exactly what you're going to get your expectations are set and i think it will be successful um i've been a big fan of what they're doing although uh in earlier iterations it didn't necessarily uh connect with me personally as a customer but i think the brand itself is uh rocking and rolling and i'm liking it a lot more as i seem to uh get older i think they're trying to appeal to us gen xers um as well so that's why i'm starting to feel more at home the older i i get with that brand it seems to to fit me more and my personality a lot more oh i think that's exactly what they're trying to do Glenn, yeah because you have disposable income so they'd like to target you no no bruce i do not have disposable income unless of course somebody <laughs> advertises <laughs> but uh we've got some great advertisers coming on board i don't want to make it seem like that that's not happening here one of which check out uh kevin barry fine art i just did a great show with them it's up right now uh kevin barry fine art does all sorts of amazing art and it's going way beyond just having pictures on the wall wait until you see what they uh what they do um if we are if if you were at Mandalay Bay last week and saw the uh, uh, Ariel redo, they did um, right around that amazing wine tower they have. They did all of the art on the walls on all three sides. So be sure if you're at Mandalay Bay, stop by, check that out. Tons of stuff. They're actually in charge of the entire uh, Cosmopolitan uh, revamp when it comes to art. Every single piece of art they are doing. That's uh, Kevin Barry Fine Art. Check out KevinBarryFineArt.com. And Bruce Ford. Um, Speaking of all of this kind of stuff, I think now it's time we get into some of those Q1 numbers that's happening. And um, I'm, I want to know what's happening with um, the most exciting hotel brand introduction that we've seen in quite some time, which is True. Yes, True by Hilton. So it's been about 16 months, Glenn, since they premiered that brand in January of 2016. And I'm here to report on the first quarter that they have their first property open in Oklahoma City. They have 15 hotels currently under construction. They have 129 hotels that are going to start in the next 12 months. Wow. And another 70 that are in early planning, bringing a total of 218 to the pipeline today. So 
fairly impressive. May have uh, seven or eight more openings this year and probably 25 next year. Mm -hmm. So they're going to begin on the trajectory of what we've seen with other brands that Hilton has launched in the past. It's certainly a very good story to this point, 100% new construction, and um, I can't wait to see an open hotel. I haven't gotten to Oklahoma City yet, as it just really soft opened prior to the HD show, but I did speak with some people that were there, and they called it innovative and unique. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't I, wait to see it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I got invited to that event, too. I was very disappointed. I could not make it out there to check it out myself, but, you know, I... I'm thinking back to when they announced it two years ago now, or a year and a half ago, at the Alice conference in January, and they pretty much built out the whole lobby in a guest room. So I kind of get a good sense of what that's going to be about, but I would like to uh, see it, touch it, feel it, you know, and do all that kind of good stuff in person for sure. Right. So, so uh, as a whole, you know, the true brand fits into the chain scale called mid-scale, Glenn. Yep. And uh, Midscale has other brands in it that I guess are more old line brands. Um, and uh, some of those are the Baymont, the traditional Best Western, um, Candlewood, Sleep. Um, we also have La Quinta in the Midscale uh, category. So True is looking to compete down there in that level. And they're really kind of the newest brand uh, in the ball game down there. And that pipeline for that chain scale continues to grow, and it's a direct result of True, as they have, you know, 218 of the 633 projects in that pipeline today. Uh, for the upper mid scale, which is your Hampton Inn, your Holiday Inn Express, um, there are more than 2,000 properties in that chain scale today that are currently uh, being considered active new construction pipeline projects. Mm-hmm. Express having 412, Home 2 having 344, Hampton Inn and Hampton Inn and Suites having like 233. Um, so, I'm sorry, 333. So significant projects between those three brands at this time. Right. Um, the openings for those brands, typically they're opening between 90 and 105 rooms. Right. And a lot of suburban locations, but some urban locations splashed in the midst of it. And in the urban location, we're seeing the pairing together in some cases of these two select service brands together in what we're calling a dual branding project yeah. or a campusing project. Yep. I got to tell you, Bruce, I'm getting a little annoyed that all of a sudden this is uh, these dual branded, triple branded products sometime are finally bubbling to the surface and, and being covered by uh, the, the general press. This is something that you and I have been talking about for a number of years now about how smart and innovative of a product it is. Instead of having one giant size hotel, have two smaller hotels in the same building that each applies to a different kind of audience to, to make it work. So I want to say to all you consumer publications out there, we were talking about this first. Give us a call. We'll tell you what's going to be happening in two years from now. And that's why everyone listens to the No Vacancy Podcast because we, we tell it. We tell it like it is. We tell it like before everybody else knows it. Right, Bruce? That's right. And we've, we're tracking almost 400 of those projects across the country today. Yep. So it's significant. Huge. And it's not a trend that happened last week. And um, I think the developers – Think about it in terms of two properties on one location, right. but developers are also even thinking about it in terms of three or four or five properties within a given town or escape if they can, because the clustering of that provides a lot of operational synergies that where you're growing into a new hotel market with a cluster of select service hotels that, in fact, do compete at different rate tiers, mm -hmm. that's working for some developers as well. So we're continuing to see that. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. We're going to definitely see uh, more of that. Bruce, what does these uh, overall numbers of the pipeline with all this development mean to you, um, generally speaking, about where we are headed, which is a question I hate to ask because you're talking about numbers in aggregate. It's not really helpful to the guy in a particular town, but what's your general vibe here? Well, the general vibe is we're within 500 projects of the last peak, Glenn. Mm-hmm. Um, the general size of a hotel construction project today versus the last peak in 2008 is about 25 rooms per hotel less. Right. So uh, that means we're building more efficient buildings. That also means we've 
uh, created a smart development profile whereby we're not overbuilding for the marketplace at an individual location. So additionally to that, it also means that new supply is coming mm -hmm. with 5,032 hotels and 602,000 guest rooms in the pipeline and an anticipated openings this year of about 1,080 hotels with about 121,500 rooms. Right. That's a, that's a supply growth of about 2.4%. Traditionally, the long-term demand has been about 2.5. However, we've been running about 3.3 for the last five years. So it's not anticipated to be an overwhelming amount of new supply. In 2018, we're going to open 143,000 guest rooms, about 1,283 hotels, which is 2.7% supply growth. That, again, shouldn't be overwhelming, okay? We've had eight years of operating performance growth that has to tr begin to soften up at some point. It can't stay at that level, um, as we've already begun to see some occupancy declines in some markets where rate is beginning to get a little bit softer, just because we can't can't go much higher, mm -hmm. okay? So in terms of where we are going, okay, the general sentiment is it's going to continue to be a softening or a soft landing zone, and it's going to continue to be a discussion about the market is slowing down a little bit, but not cratering, Right. okay? And that slowing down is uh, a direct result of long-term performance, greatness that cyclically has to begin to slide a little bit right well i hope uh, i hope bruce that you are absolutely correct and it's just a little bit and not a lot of it i'm starting to get a little bit more concerned about the um overall general uh, tone of what's happening uh politically speaking with the divide that we're having in this country and i'm concerned folks are going to not be traveling to the united states i'm concerned that people are going to start to pare back their summer vacations and i'm very concerned about the uh, operational health going forward i say concerned i'm not making a prediction here i'm just worried that i think that people are starting to get a little bit more antsy and may put off some stuff well, Glenn, there's a few things on the horizon that are certainly not a supply issue that could have an effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're talking about... I'm thinking about that laptop uh, ban from flights to Europe that I'm hearing may take place. Yeah, well, I, that's a security thing, okay? And I'm, and I'm not entirely convinced that it wouldn't have happened under any regime. I'm not saying okay, that it's regime-specific. I'm saying that yep. um, that particular act will make it um, less convenient for people. And I think that people may just say, ah, forget about it. Let's not, let's push off that business trip. Let's not visit the United States this year, that kind of stuff. Well, you know, there are certainly some countries in Europe that are seeing some downturn economically that are in worse position than the United States. It's a unfortunate scenario that is going to have some effect. It has not had an effect yet. Mm-hmm. Um, although we've only seen a few months occur, okay? But keeping in mind, Glenn, right. that we have had a tremendous run, and all real estate is cyclical, okay? And all valuations are cyclical. And where we sit today is right at the top of the mountain. Yep. Okay? And for a long Matter time, we've been fact, at the top of the mountain. It depends on how many chairs there are at the top of the mountain that we right. can sit at, where we can get a different view, yep. okay? Yeah. And, uh, 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 and today we're hoping there's a few more that hang around. Yep. Because to be honest with you, owners should be comfortable in the fact that they've had a nice run up to the top. Mm -hmm. And now they must think differently about where they're going, okay, because they are going to get some new hotels. They are going to need to contemplate renovating. They are right. going to need to... Um, consider uh, avenues of revenue management that they may not have uh, in recent years. And these are all factors that are on the table. And it's a cyclical nature in the hotel business. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we have some of these things coming to bear. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And uh, whew, we got, we're in for a little bit of a roller coaster, I think, uh, you know. 
regardless of, of what happens. So everyone, uh, buckle up for safety. We're going to see uh, see what's going on. Bruce, any final words before we move on? And I want to tell everyone out now, stick around, because after this commercial break, we got an amazing interview with Derek Stevens. Derek Stevens is the, the mastermind behind what's happening in Las Vegas downtown with properties such as the D, the Golden Gate, an all-new one coming soon, and this great outdoor entertainment um, area. Pretty cool stuff happening downtown. I know that um, I love to go downtown at least once on every single Vegas trip, if possible. It's just so much fun down there. Mm, yes, you've always been that guy, Glenn. Well, not always. But some of my final... Not, not five years ago, because it sucked five years ago. Now it's great. <laughs> but yes, final thoughts, Bruce Ford. Some of my, some of my final thoughts. Uh, certainly visit us on Twitter at Lodging Econometrics. Um, we no have logic econometric kind of on Twitter. No S. You got to leave off that last S for savings, as I like to say. <laughs> we have put up some of our latest Q1 information. Yep. Mm-hmm. Additionally, you're always welcome to contact me directly if you're interested in more information about your market or more information about chain scales and brands and projects. And I'm B R U C E at lodgingeconometrics.com. And I'm always happy to uh, to help anybody. You can also catch us through the website at lodgingeconometrics.com. And Glenn, thanks so much for the invitation. Have a wonderful May, and we'll see you in New York. Thanks. See you in New York for uh, NYU. Bruce and I will do a special show from there. I want to thank all of you guys for listening. If you liked what we had to say today, specifically on some of the Hilton stuff, make sure you check out my interview from last week's show with uh, Ray Schultz on Birthing Hampton Inn. Yes, he created the focus service category in the Hampton Inn brand. And also, hey... Love Disney, love technology, love uh, love things like magic bands. Make sure you check out my show from April 28th, Focus with John Padgett, who's with uh, Carnival Corporation now, working on the Ocean Medallion system. But this guy created magic bands. This guy created Disney Magical Express. He even created the Be Our Guest restaurant experience. Check those shows out. Stick around, because after this commercial break, we got the great interview with Derek Stevens. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back right after this. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No vacancy. The hospitality industry's number one podcast will be right back. Hey, everyone. This is Jeff from Endpoint Multimedia. You've heard me on the show give off lists of great travel tips and spots. Well, now I'm going to give you my super secret beach vacation spot. Villas Hermosas is just steps from the beautiful beach of Playa Hermosa in Costa Rica, which is close to Santa Teresa and Malpais. I've personally been going to Villas Hermosas for seven years now, and the owners Brad and Tara treat their guests like friends. And no matter what your interests are, they'll lead you in the right direction. The reason I love this particular part of the country is that the southern Nicoya Peninsula is more untouched and uh, raw than some of the more well-known tourist destinations of Costa Rica. But don't let that ruggedness fool you. You can be pampered as much as you'd like at Villas Hermosas, and the restaurants in town are simply amazing. So whether you're looking for true solitude, an adventure vacation with zip lining and quad tours, or a great surfing destination with super consistent waves, Villas Hermosas is my personal recommendation. Check them out, villashermosas.com, and let them know you heard about them from us. Enjoy the rest of the show. Straight into it. Downtown Las Vegas, I'm a little sleepy, I gotta admit. I was up at uh, 3 a.m. local time, flew all the way over here, but I did it because... I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to talk to, uh, I don't know what to call you, the impresario of downtown, the godfather of downtown, the kingpin of downtown, Mr. Derek Stevens, owner of the the D, Golden Gate, and more to come. How are you, sir? There we go. That, that's good. The owner of the D and the Golden Gate. All the rest <laughs> of the stuff, that's that's where all the big guys been. Uh, yeah, well, I got to tell you, uh, you've been down here now 10 years, right? D's been here five years. You've uh, become one of the big guys in that time. Oh, I don't know about that. I think, you know, the great thing about Fremont Street and getting to see all this development happen, uh, you know, I think I happen to be the guy that got in maybe a little bit early, and just to be part of it is pretty uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, I think an argument could be made that uh, you're a big reason why uh, some of downtown has kind of taken off. Because i got to tell you, when you first came in, not necessarily during the uh, early days of the Golden Gate, but since the D opened, downtown has completely changed. It's really, I think, come, become everything people had hoped it would be. And now I can't come to Las Vegas without spending at least one night downtown. Well, that's good. That's good to know. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I guess it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you do little things, uh, 
you know, week after week, month after month, year, year after year. And, uh, you know, we've always had the same philosophy. We try to uh, have a lot of fun and, uh, and, and have people want to tell a couple more friends and uh, come on back on your next trip. And, and I think a little bit that's happening. I mean, you know, and then the downtown Las Vegas Event Center started up. That That's bringing a lot of people downtown. So that's adding into it, too. Right. All right. So I was going to talk about the downtown Las Vegas Center uh, in a little bit. But let's get to that right now, and then we'll get back to some of the other stuff. Because that's pretty cool. It's a outdoor concert venue type of place. You can have festivals and all of that kind of thing out there. You uh, you own that. What was, the, what was the idea behind that? Well, that was the old county courthouse, right? And uh, you know, it had been vacated. looks much better as a parking lot, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, uh, when we uh, when we went to the auction and and bought the bought the courthouse, uh, it gave us our first big demo project. So we got to do that right. for a year, tearing stuff down. And uh, the whole thought process was that uh, you know, there's not a lot of city blocks that get created in in a in a in a downtown area, and we figured we could have a lot of fun. Uh, throwing some parties out there uh, uh yeah and it looks like you have uh, big parties out there this summer you got uh was rive, rise against uh deftones and you've got um art of rap with ice tea and krs1 big daddy kane man these are guys from back in my day <laughs> <laughs> we tried to mix it up a little bit i mean we've had a, we've had a very very broad range of uh, of concerts out there and and festivals were just coming off of uh you know our our our, our most successful festival called Las rages so a heavy metal festival and that oh, yeah? was terrific um, and then, and then this summer we've got uh, an EDM events. We've got outdoor barbecues. We've got uh, all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, I like uh, I like the outdoor barbecue type of thing. I'm a huge barbecue fan, by the way. You couldn't tell uh, being from New York and, and all, but uh, we've got a pretty good uh, barbecue scene. I used to live in Brooklyn up until recently, and uh, that's become a real hotbed of uh, barbecue over there. That's, that's what I've heard. I've not been there. I, I was in Brooklyn, uh, yeah, oh, a couple years ago, and I can't believe the amount of investment there as well. It's, it's awesome. It's insane, especially the hotel development over there it's been um absolutely uh, out of control i think a little too much and all of my uh, hotel friends out there sorry it's uh it's overbuilt it's too much but one place not overbuilt downtown here 10 years ago when you first got involved what were you thinking because uh, you know people might have argued that you're crazy to want to get involved downtown in an area that seemed to have been past it today yeah but i think you know the one thing about downtown las vegas is is that is it, it somewhat represents all of Las Vegas, and, and it has the ability to reinvent itself. And, you know, going in in 2006, 2007 with the Golden Gate, and the economy's about ready to fall off the cliff, and nobody could find any jobs. Um, to be honest, it, it, it kind of opened up the door a little bit because prices were down. And, right. And uh, it, it actually gave a little bit of an entryway for my brother and I to uh, come to Las Vegas. So, but why? What was the reason for it? You had a successful business in Michigan and the auto parts industry, right? And Vegas is not what I would normally think somebody would go into next. Well, you know, coming to Vegas, uh, you know, I've always loved Las Vegas. I love uh, the income tax structure out here. <laughs> and and I, love, I love mean people out here. Um, the, the strip was a little bit different. Um, had some investments in the strip, but uh, but I really thought if we came to Vegas, um, it would give us a little more opportunity to to uh, run with some of our wacky ideas, which may not get approved if we were part of a committee. Yeah, that's right. But but uh, no, I mean we try a lot, and uh, and and uh, they don't all work out. But uh, but you know we 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 do try to create create experiences and um, events that I think people would would enjoy. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about what went into uh, creating here at the D because it's got great, great energy. I love that long bar down there where I hear you're always hanging out at the end of it, you know. But every time I'm down here on, you know, my my multi annual trips here and I come downtown, you're never there. But everyone always says you're there. I don't know what's going on. I must have terrible timing. I do try to be there as much as yeah. I can. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's just it's just a development of of uh, things that you know when people are out and. And, and, uh, you know, when hanging out at the Golden Gate, we were, you know, be watching sports, but then all of a sudden there's a couple games on, you can't see them all that well. So it was just one of those nights we take a napkin, start drawing things out like, man, if I had a bar and it had everything I wanted, what would I want? I want to be long. I want to have a lot of TVs. I want to be able to watch every game. And if I ever could, could I find somebody that actually knows how to change the channels at the same, at the same rate that in my mind, I want the channels changed. All of a sudden things started coming together and that's kind of what happened. Yeah. So that's, so you you talk about not working with committees. You get to make all the decisions yourself. And I think that's a real big advantage over the, uh, the giant guys that are a little bit further South than here. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you're able to accomplish because you don't have to worry about 
stockholders and boards and well, all I that would kind say, of stuff. I would say it's not like you get to make all the decisions yourself. It's it's the fact that you get to surround yourself with, with people that kind of think the same way, that want to be a little more creative and are willing to try things. Um Heck, we just got out of a meeting. I'm going off. I'm going off. Uh, off interview here. I'm looking at looking at our team. But we just went off uh, uh, on a meeting, you know. And the great thing was we didn't have a predetermined budget. We worked out a great, great deal. And I'm real excited about uh, a future uh, a future relationship we're going to have from a marketing side of things. Uh, it's going to be things that are a lot of fun. And and when you surround yourself with people that are are more like minded that are um, able to be a little bit more creative that's kind of what happens there's definitely not one guy i right. when things go well when, <laughs> definitely when things go well i mean i i get the benefit of standing up in front of everybody everyone thinks it's me right. and 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 that's 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 kind of embarrassing to me because it's definitely not uh but you know on the other hand i guess when things go the other way i mean i'm the guy that has to stand up as well um so yeah but that's really uh that's a really tough thing to do is to uh, accept uh, compliments and stuff like that. I mean, at the beginning of this, only like, you know, five short, seven minutes, short minutes ago, you know, I started off uh, very flattering, but you can't really handle it. I'm kind of the same way. I'd rather people not acknowledge me <laughs> at all than say nice things. It's got to be a lot easier that other way, right? <laughs> well, it's just, it's just, you put yourself around a good team and you can handle a lot of situations. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're building across the street now, man. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. Although you uh, took away mermaids and glitter gulch. So that's a, that's a, that's a real rough thing for a lot of people but newer is always better you said the city reinvents itself i didn't realize you're going to be like basically going from the ground up over there uh we're going well actually yeah we'll be going from the ground up but first right now we've got to go uh you know from buildings on down so uh we're, we're getting back to our uh um, our demolition guys are going to be coming back into town. So we're going to be tearing everything down, and uh, we're going to be working through that element of the project uh, before we start building up. What do you think customers are looking for these these days downtown? Oh, you know, I think, I think still um, everybody wants to come to Las Vegas and have a great time. And what that means is different to everybody. Um, some people just want to get away from the regular, um, the regular grind at home and uh, – not have to worry about the laundry or, or or making the bed or running running chores. Um, other people are just coming because they're they're all fired up and they want to get after it on a given weekend. You know, some people want to watch sports. Some people want to want to have drinks. Some people just want to go out with their friends and just smile and laugh and joke. And and uh, you know, I think that's a little bit about what we try to do. We're trying to make sure that. We're trying to address those elements to make sure that people, when they come here, they remember it and and, and they, they leave with a smile. Yeah, I feel like one of the things that you do that the folks um, around town don't necessarily do is you appeal towards, um, I would say, the, uh, the everyman. And I don't mean that pejoratively. I find that uh, a lot of times some of the other casinos are really focused on the, uh, the young hipster 20-somethings. And they forget about us uh, older, normal folks. You know, I... You know, I, I can't say anything really bad about because everybody has their own niche. Yeah. I mean, and what they do. I mean, I think, I think when you look at like downtown, take a look at what the California Main Street do with their Hawaiian customers. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're best in class. They're, they're they're terrific. When you see what MGM did with their joint venture with AEG to create T-Mobile, yeah, that's something that I mean, it impacts downtown, but it impacts all of Las Vegas. It's great for everybody. So. Uh, I mean, I just love seeing the you know these new developments come up. Take take something like Top Golf. Yeah, you know, there's no hotel rooms there, but man, is this great for Vegas? People are coming here for this. So I, you know, I, I think everybody has their own niche, and I just love seeing things getting reinvented. That's so true. I was at a, a Top Golf last week. I was at a client meeting down in Virginia, and I'd never been to a Top Golf before. And I've seen the one that opened up um, on the former MGM theme park space over here, and. Uh, I thought it was like the coolest idea ever. Now, this is a guy I don't like golf. I don't care about golf. It didn't interest me at all. But what a fascinating idea. And it really connected with people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a great thing about it was if, if you play golf, uh, you're going to like it. But if you don't, you're not going to be offended. You can still have a great yeah. time, whether you're just watching your friends play or whether you want to get up there and, and actually try to hit a couple of balls and you're going to have some great food and some drink and being outside. It's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, you're going to get uh, season tickets for the uh, the Las Vegas hockey team, the uh, Golden Knights? I think we will, yes. Yeah. No, we definitely, we definitely <laughs> will. Uh, you know, I think I think uh, the Knights coming to Vegas is uh, is is just a monumental shift for the town. I think this town really wants to have uh, a major league level professional sports team, and and I actually think hockey really could be uh, a, a, as great of a first team as, as could be. Um, hockey fans are passionate; um, they're fun, 
Uh, and we're going to see a lot of people coming to visit because hockey fans travel. Yeah, they sure do, and uh, it'll be the same thing when uh, the football team comes into town. But uh, to me, you're, I think you're absolutely right. You know, People want to come to the hockey games, and even if uh, the Las Vegas Golden Knights had no fans whatsoever, I bet you most of those games are going to get sold out anyway. Oh, I think they will. I mean, that, the, one thing, the one thing that's kind of funny, for, like for me growing up in Detroit, I'm, pretty much everybody I know has been to a hockey game at least at some point, yeah. you know? The, a lot of people in Las Vegas have not been to a hockey game, and there's no sport that is so dramatically different in person versus television than uh, an NHL game. The speed of the game and the excitement—it's. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. I think it's going to take take Vegas a, um, a little bit by storm. Yeah, I think so too. How do you really think that that and football changes um, not just what's offered in the city, but? the attitude of the people who you know live and work and own in the city well i think i mean i i would say i'd fit into that the category of of all that and i i would say i think like everybody there's an element about yeah. being proud about it and uh and i think everybody's proud that that now las vegas has uh, a couple of a uh, couple of big time teams coming and uh you just you know where you work and where you live you 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 end up developing a certain passion and a certain love love for your city and uh and I think it's it's elevated the the level of a lot of people around town whether you're in the hotel casino gaming business right it doesn't really matter the fact that now Vegas has a couple of teams that we could call our own that's pretty awesome I think it's really freaking awesome because it changes the whole perception I think of how people view that the city that they live in all of a sudden it feels like oh we've arrived we've reached a new level of status and you know now we're up there with Detroit and New York and LA and all those other cities yeah, I mean, it, it, like that, and you know, some of these midwestern cities. I mean, I, I think the pride you see coming out of Pittsburgh and out of Cleveland and out of Chicago and Detroit. I mean, it's amazing how how uh, you know on a given night how a whole community community can can uh, be brought together by by their team, and I think that's what's going to happen here. Yeah, for sure. And um, you're going to be building a whole lot of new rooms there uh, across the street. You're getting ready for it. Any uh, any idea what the focus is of the property, or is it too early to really tell? Um, yes. <laughs> I love that answer. That's great. All right. So let's, uh, let's go on to a different question. <laughs> All right. I guess we're not getting any, no, we're, we're, on we're working on well, things. When, do you, we're it, when things. do you think it'll open? Oh, we're, we're a little ways away. Remember, we still, yeah. uh, we still have to go through demolition and demolition has some variables to it. So we're going to start tearing some things down here by the end of the year. Well, the good thing is, um, Las Vegas doesn't have a massive sense of, uh, history and its infrastructure. So you don't have to deal with a lot of, uh, rules and regulations i'm sure to get rid of the old i mean you look at what in new york try to do any project it takes two years longer than you expected yeah um we're, we've still we've, we spent a decent amount of time getting our permits in order Did and you? all that but uh but yeah i mean it's it's obviously it's a little different town than uh than what you would see maybe uh out east and things like that uh but um but no we're looking forward to uh this demo project um and and uh and and hopefully it goes uh quickly and safely yeah so uh, how do you do it all how do you run all of these different businesses and keep track of what's going on in in detroit and how, you, there's only one of you and your brother it doesn't seem like enough people to make it all work oh no no no! it's real important you have you you, you have to develop uh, great teams around you so that that uh that's definitely the case so how do you do that you know, I talk to a lot of CEOs, you know, from major hotel corporations, those kind of guys, and I'm always fascinated by what it's like to actually take on a leadership role and get people to rally behind you and give their ideas like you say they do here. How do you foster that sense of uh, creativity and getting people to really participate in it? Well, I mean, I think I think one thing you want to do is you want to you want to foster, um, you know, an, an environment where everybody's comfortable being there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my in my automotive businesses, uh, obviously that's more of a Monday through Friday type of business. But uh, but boy, we had a great time on Saturday. You know, when everybody would come in, nobody had to, but everybody would come in all Saturday afternoon, and we'd come up with different ideas. And you know, it, and we're all wearing suits and stuff Monday through right. Friday. So over there, it's kind of casual. It was kind of like letting letting letting. Uh, letting there be a little little more opportunity for some free discussion kind of similar to here i mean everybody's working here everybody works different schedules so the 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 deal is is you know the the door's kind of always open whether you're at the prohibition bar at the golden gate or at, at the long bar at the d i would really try to create an environment where um when you're not officially working 
um, why don't you come down and hang out? That type of thing. It's 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 uh, it's a way to talk to, talk and have everybody talk together. Right. And uh, is that kind of where the ideas kind of germinate from a lot of the times? Well, I mean, a lot of times we've got meetings all day long. We're thinking about one thing or another, but sometimes it's hard to digest it. If there's, you know, 15 people in a room, you know, you don't always want to, you don't always want to speak up. Even I don't, by the way. Uh, but, but, <laughs> the uh, team is laughing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but, but sometimes after the meeting's over, you get to digest things a little bit. And a couple hours later, you come down and, uh, you know, you have a beer or get a drink and say, hey, I, I have another idea to add to it. I'm like, oh, man, that's a great idea. Okay, let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. So, um, yeah, so how- I, I love I love talking about business and ideas and, and creativeness, you know, after the end of the official work day, because I think there's so many great ideas that come up that way. Well, not only that, but um, in this business in particular, um, it's just a, it's fun and interesting and seems endless with what you can do and talk about. I mean, it's food and beverage. It's hotels. It's the casino gambling aspect. It's a little bit of uh, everything. Yeah, I mean, that that's the great thing. I mean, everything's connected and uh and uh, everybody's got great ideas, so uh, we just got to make sure that one division doesn't come up with the greatest idea ever that kills another one. And right. It all, all works together, <laughs> and sometimes that stuff happens. You know, we all lean in one way or the other, but but the whole thing is trying to get the collective uh, collective momentum uh, going. Yeah. So uh, there is a lot of momentum down here, uh, especially. How do you feel about how the city's changed now in the last five years in downtown? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, you get to see all these things happening on Fremont East, and now they're building housing over there, and you see all this new renovation, and uh, you see more people wanting to move downtown. And then all, all the homes here were like like some of the law firms are. I mean, all these homes are being renovated and turned into lofts and other things like that. So I think it's terrific. And, and you know, I think some of the things happening on Symphony Park are great. And right now we're in the biggest construction project in the history of Nevada on the Spaghetti Bowl here and, and all that. So all the, new, all the new roads, I mean, I think it's terrific. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really amazing how much it's all changed in such a short period of time because it really felt like uh, the city was kind of – this part of the city was kind of stuck for a long time. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, when you came in, it started to change. The economy started to pick up. All of a sudden, the entire personality of downtown has uh, radically changed. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, there's an awful lot of entrepreneurs here that, that are um, – that seem very similar to me that, that are, are, are trying to – Trying to make something, trying to try something, and uh, and trying to run with it, and 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 I that's why I love seeing these guys, some of the restaurant tours, you know, like they may only be open till nine o'clock at night, or some are open till eleven. Then they come in, they want to have a drink after they're off, and like you know, I I love all these guys. Like, hey, how how'd you ring last night? How was this? How was that? And for for me, it's 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 awesome to see these guys excited. Yeah, and not only that, but it seems like um you got the attitude of since all these casinos are downtown, you don't necessarily feel you need to keep people in the D, for example, all night long. You're cool people coming in and out, and uh, thought it was really revolutionary where you put the bar on the outside, the first ones to do that downtown, and I think that really uh you know woke up the uh, the atmosphere out there. Yeah, that, that's kind of funny. When, when we uh, when we made that application to put that first outdoor bar over at Golden Gate, that was the very first one. No, yeah. there, was, there were no rules on it, and uh, worked through it. But I think it created it created a kind of a dynamic atmosphere where it actually made the Viva Vision better. It made people be able to get a drink outside where they could look up and yep. see these shows. And I think what FSC's done with all the new Viva Vision shows, I mean that. That's been there's been a lot of changes there. So, so there's new shows. there's actually new shows up there now. There's because, a lot of new shows. Because if I have to see American Pie one more time, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna kill somebody. <laughs> now, 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 now I would say you're dating yourself on that one because that's been a little <laughs> while. But you're right. But that played and played and yeah, played. Yeah, you're right for sure. Uh, what's your favorite thing about uh, you know living and working down here in this in this part of the area instead of uh, you know uptown? Um. You know, I'm I'm not really one that that compares too much. I think I think that downtown has a unique um, vibe, a, a a different energy, um, and I think it's great for a lot of people. And I think the strip does too. And and I don't think I really don't think there's any competition. I think there's a it, it's it's just very complimentary. I mean, some of the things on the strip are just. I mean, just so best in class, world class. Totally. I love it when we have people that, that come here and are staying on the Strip. I love it when we have people that stay here and and want to go want to go do something on the Strip. Uh, I just think it, it creates another um, experience and another reason for people to come to Las Vegas as a whole. Yeah, I, I got to say I agree with you. Uh, I call that the uh, cluster effect when you have a lot of really cool places all together. It just it gets that many more people that want to come to the to the town. You go to the regional casinos when it's just one building. They're all really 
depressing in, in a lot of ways. They're not very exciting. They don't have that energy. But here, when you have all these different operators and all these different products available, I think it really mixes it up and brings in a whole different group of, of people to town. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree completely. It's it's a whole different ballgame c- compared to like a single regional casino somewhere else. I mean, that is not a business that I'm I'm in, and it's frankly, it's not a business I want to be in. I mean, I, I enjoy... I enjoy the element of, of people coming in. I love hearing the stories, you know, when people are flying in from Chicago and half hour before they land, you know, they see the lights going on and uh, they see the lights coming up on the plane and all of a sudden they get excited and they want to go after it. And that's, that's fun. Yeah, and you um you seem to be uh, one that really wants to foster that sense of uh, community. I had on um, Tim Dressen from Five Hundred by Midnight on a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. Or I guess maybe more than a month by the time this show airs. And I'll, uh, he, he, what I loved is that you were so opening to that Vimp community, the Vegas Internet Mafia family picnic, right? And you you really brought all these people together, and now they become really rabid fans of your place, and they've created a sense of community all around your building here. Yeah, the Vimp guys are the Vimp guys actually hit a certain element that uh, they are exceptionally knowledgeable about Las Vegas. They're passionate about Las Vegas, and um, their creativity is beyond ridiculous. Right. So, so I think we had a we had, we had a perfect uh, perfect marriage there. Yeah, I had uh, David Schwartz on my old show to talk about uh, the Jay Sarno Caesars book when that came out. That was a really fascinating, smart, interesting guy. I'm always jealous of those uh, professor guys. I got to tell you. You know, <laughs> he's a great guy. And, and I'll tell you what, Grandissimo is a great book. Yeah. Right. So, OK. So um, before we wrap up here, where do you think the, the future of Las Vegas is going and how do you see your role in it? Oh, I, you know, I think uh, I think my role would, would continue just to, to keep growing. I mean, I like to I like to be involved in businesses that are growing. And and right now we've got a big project of uh, bringing things down and taking things up. So that's kind of what our focus is going to be on for a little while. And along with everything going on at the event center. So it's all about growing downtown and growing our team and uh, having fun while we're doing it. Is it ever uh, enough? And I don't mean for you personally. I just mean in, in general. I think that people need to keep creating, people need to keep doing, you know. You probably feel that that way, right? So how do you keep that uh, that spirit and the energy up all the time in order to make all these things happen? Well, I mean, I, what else do you want to do? Right. No, but I'm serious. I know. I mean, what are you going to do? Go hang out at Top Golf for the rest of your life? Probably no, not. No, no. But it's a lot of fun, and as long as, as long as things can be fun, exciting, and uh, and you can be creating these these experiences, um, you know, it, th- this is terrific. I mean, I, I I love being I love being part of the team, and you know, every day is a little bit different here. Uh, I love the vibe that we've created kind of down here on Sundays during the fall with regards to football. I love the vibe that I know we're going to create with hockey. So I mean, thinking about what it's going to be like and how will people react—that's uh, that's been an right. awful lot of fun. How do you know when it's time to um, create those new experiences when what you've already done is probably going to reach a peak? Because I find people wait too long before they pivot and make changes. So how do you know when it's time for you to do that? Well, it might be more according to whether or not you got any money to right. be able to <laughs> out finance it. Yes, yeah. but. Uh, but uh, no, I think it's it's all about you know you have to be able to get financing. You gotta have you gotta have your team in order, and you've got to have ideas and 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 then and then for a project to happen or or an idea or concept to happen, you need all the stars to align. You just can't you can't have a you can't have a hole or weakness on one side or the other. I mean, there, I believe me, there, in this town more than ever, there there are a lot of great ideas that run you know run out of the ability to deal with the financing. I mean that that eclipses. A lot of these things. Right. Sometimes there's financing, but you don't have the great ideas. I mean, I think you you, you can see you can see projects that you know w- would be on both sides. Uh, you know, you got to have all the stars aligned. Yeah. How do you feel about the whole city kind of um, changing from the everything's indoor aspect to now we want to do everything outdoors aspect? You see, uh, like the the link and the park and you know and here in, in Fremont District. Really, I thought that was our idea. It was, well, yeah. <laughs> it was with the downtown Las Vegas event, open no, air with, venue. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, it was my. It actually really was. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to what back to what I used to come to Vegas just for fun, and uh, and and I saw I went to a Bo Holyfield fight over at yeah. Caesars. That was uh-huh. a famous fight. Uh, with the fan man coming down, and I'm like, oh, the electricity out here, the yeah. sky in Vegas, the energy is unbelievable. So that had some of the, some, that had a lot to do with my own mind about well, if we created this outdoor venue, um, people just act differently, and I think people love getting a little bit of fresh air. Um, you see it a little bit now. 
um, in the daytime with the with the development of the pools and the day clubs, and I think that's mm-hmm. that's something that's significantly on the upswing. But then going out at night and you got the stars and everybody's everybody's happy being outside. Um, I think it makes sense. Um, I, I guess it's true. I, there's a lot more outside stuff. I kind of thought that we were the first ones bringing that. No, back. you pro- you probably <laughs> you you know you were definitely uh, up there in the first ones, but you know those guys came in and they you know they built these giant facilities, right. especially uh, especially the link, and I think that that has kind of changed you know what everyone else is doing because of the stuff that you did first. You've kind of led the way in a lot of different ways. Well, I, th- I mean, I think what the link is like, I think I think that's great for mm-hmm. Vegas. I think what's happening at the park is going to, yeah. it's just awesome. the Toshiba Plaza where you can hang out before event, after event, the outdoor restaurants, and they're all a little bit different. So they all bring something something different. So it's, it's, uh, it's good. So you're just going to essentially just buy all of downtown at some point? Is that what you're planning? Oh, no, 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 no. We got some. We've oh, got you some. split it with Tony Shea. All right. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We got some, we've got some great entrepreneurs here. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I, I love the fact that I get to be a partner with Tillman Fertitta, you know, from yep. Landry's and the Golden Nugget, uh, with with guys at Boyd and, and, and everything that they do that's uh, – that's top notch, and then and then we got Binnings Four Queens with Terry. I, I'm I'm glad I get to sit on uh, on a board and be partners with these guys. So um, I I think we're we're a lot better um, together than than uh, um, yeah. you know trying to go down a different path. I mean we I love the fact that now that I'm, I'm going to build a, build this new property. I know Tillman's thinking about what he's renovating. I know the California and Boyd. They're you know they're investing. Mm-hmm. I know Tony Shea's got 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 his projects going. So I just think I think it's 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 a great thing. I mean as, as the business keeps growing, economy keeps getting better. Um, we we, we kind of make we kind of make each other better. So I think that's important. And where's it all? Where's it all end? Or maybe it just never does. Or maybe it just keeps recycling itself and expressing itself in different ways. I, it's like that Journey song keeps right? going on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I won't stop believing. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you that much. Anything? Uh, anything else that you want to add before we uh, wrap up here? No, I I, I appreciate I uh, appreciate you uh, coming down here, and uh, hopefully while you're here, you can enjoy a little American Coney Island or an Andiamo steak or something like that. Oh well, yeah, and I'll definitely uh, be uh, heading upstairs to the retro casino because I really uh, love that. It reminds me of uh, when my grandparents would take me to Atlantic City in the 1970s. Right, I couldn't gamble because I was uh, just a little Glen then, but uh, you know, getting that roll of quarters and putting them into the machines was uh, always very exciting to uh, watch and be a part of. And now I get to do that here, and of course, uh, hit that. Sigma Derby, which other people are now trying to get it muscle in on your Sigma Derby territory in this uh, town. I, I think uh, I think there's going to be a few new iterations of Sigma Derby coming out at some point. All right. and, uh, <laughs> but there is something special about that game. That's everybody remembers right. playing that. Yeah, and it's uh, for, for those of you who don't know, it's a it's a historic game where it's uh, a horse race, right? So you you bet on which ones are going to win. The horses go all around the little track, and then uh, you get a big winner. So. If I'm going to piece together all the stuff that we talked about here, I think that the casino concept across the street is going to be the, the Sigma Derby Casino. That's, Sigma what, I, Derby. that's what I'm thinking. It's under advisement. All right. <laughs> all right. So we broke the news here first. Uh, how about a couple of – how about some shameless plugs? Tell us, uh, tell us where people could find your properties, book your properties, all that good stuff. Uh, I think you can find everything at, uh, at the D.com, uh, downtown Las Vegas Event Center, if you're searching that out, in the Golden Gate Casino. Um, just come on down anytime, and I and I I'm going to try to upgrade my game. I'll try to be down at, down at one of those bars one of those nights after five o'clock. Excellent. Well, I will try to uh, find you at one of those guys those bars, and I want to thank you so much for being here. And guys, make sure you come down here, stay here. It's a lot of fun, so enjoyable down here. It's so much. It's so different than any other place that I've been to with casinos in the uh, the entire world, uh, especially Monte Carlo. That was way too stuffy. Let me tell let me tell you, but guys. Thanks for listening, and I will be back next week. That is, unless I decide to uh, muscle my way into the downtown Las Vegas casino game, but I won't do that. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at Rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.